May I come in, sir? Yeah, please. Come. Good morning. Good morning. Ma'am. Come. Thank you, sir. Here is Reddy. Yes. Sir. You are from? Sir, uh, I was born in Nalunda district, sir. Uh, but since my engineer, uh, intermediate stage, I am staying in Hyderabad, sir. Okay. You pursued your BA, Bachelor of Arts, in which subjects? Sir, uh, in Political Science and International Relations, uh, Public Administration and History, sir. But you have, you have opted for Anthropology. Yes. Is there any reason? Sir, uh, when it came upon me that I have to choose my option, uh, I took certain criteria into consideration. Anthropology was a new subject. Uh, I got my interest evoked into it. And there was also this fact that uh, it was also scoring well. So based on this criteria, I chose anthropology as my option. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which is the dominant tribe in your native district, Nalgonda? Sir, uh, I would say Lambada, sir. You can see Lambada tribes in most of the hamlets around okay. the villages. Uh, besides them, I would say Chenchu, sir. Are there any anthropological studies carried out on this community? Try. Sir, uh, I'm not particularly aware of uh, any studies, sir, but I have seen certain documentaries uh, that were recorded among the Chenchus, sir. Mm -hmm. I'm not able to recollect the name of the person, but uh, the characteristics which I can recollect is that the Chenchus are uh, hunter gatherers uh, traditionally. A famous anthropologist from India, can you name? Very famous. Sir, uh, I would say Ayravati Karve. I love the car mm -hmm. and? Uh, and sir, LP Vidyarthi. Okay. Very often, the very Elvin's name figures. Have we heard of the name? Yes. Where he studied, which tribe he studied, very Elvin, and what was his contribution to? To policy making towards the tribes of Northeast. Sir, uh, very Elvin uh, had studied especially the Northeast tribes, sir. So he was also employed in the government of the Northeast. Uh, he studied uh, these Nagas, Naga tribes, and these uh, Mishmis of Arunachal Pradesh, uh, and also uh, Abur, Abur tribes. Uh, he had this approach initially of uh, uh, an isolationist approach, which was later changed. His isolationist approach was based upon his uh, concerns for the protection of the culture and uh, a developmental strategy, which is more centric, tribal centric, and at a pace which they are comfortable with. But later it was uh, changed to an integrationist approach, sir, wherein uh, government would also play an active role to increase the range of operation, uh, increase the range of opportunities that would be provided to the tribals so that they can make an uh, active choice whether to stay uh, and continue their uh, own traditional way of life or uh, integrate into society at the pace which they would decide. Why Northeast tribes prefer? isolationist approach advocated by Vere Relvin, whereas in mainland tribes, this is lacking. Sir, uh, I would say th there is a colonial uh, contradictory, contradict sir. Uh, because during the colonial age, uh, these Britishers had seen to it that there was What was the system created by the colonial to introduce this Isolationist approach. What was that? The uh, uh, there was this Bengal regulations and inner line, inner line permits that were issued, so that uh, there would there was this distance that was created between the mainline nationalist movement and the tribals. And also, sir, there is a is it not functional inner line permit? Why should why should we why should not we allow? Suppose Andaman Andaman is they are happy in their small little world like you and me. Why should who are we to judge? them they are underdeveloped, they are backward. What is your view on this approach? Sir, uh, there are two ways of looking into it. Uh, there is a sociological perspective of development by Yogendra Singh. It says that development is a, a strategy which is very unique, wherein a tribe uh, decides what is development for them. They choose what is development, as you have stated. There is also this uh, epic, uh, ethic approach, wherein we take a very scientific and rational and mainstream approach wherein we list out certain categories like the level of literacy, education, employment, and political participation, and 
technological levels these are uh, these are uh, you can say this is a western thought or a template sir so we can use both of them but are the delhiites are happy with their development progress internet connectivity visa vis the northeast where there is no internet do you, do you consider the delhiites are far more happier than northeast people tribes uh sir i would say happiness is a very subjective thing uh for a person who is residing in Take the happiness index okay there is a concept called happiness index yes which is relatively objective sir i would so, say uh, delhi if we go by the mainstream standards of the happiness index the delhi people are more happy because of the i don't agree with you what are the parameters of happiness sir the availability of education uh, clean environment and uh, quality of life sir for example environmental value uh, the fog which we see in delhi the thick fog is a, i read a, bhutan a, is the most happiest nation in the world yes 90% of the bhutan doesn't have internet so internet modern education is not the basis for happiness that causes more stress more tensions more crime against women whereas in the north east no crime against women their life expectancy is more than 90% there is no bp sugar heart attacks no how whereas in delhi so what is this what is this do you agree that we should interfere with the northeast tribes when they are happy sir uh, there is a dichotomy there is a section of people who want to live a traditional way of life and we'll allow them absolutely we do not interfere to, uh, with those kind of people for the example is of the sentinelis which are uh, most isolated tribes and they live their own they live their life on their own accords but there is also a group of tribes who have who are aspirational who want to achieve some material aspects in life who want to set up industries who want to be educated and employed so we we take a more open approach where we create opportunities for people who want to take uh, who want to make, mainstream themselves the opportunities of education and employment so i, I believe uh, we are uh, we are on the right side right ma'am please So Deeraj what is this uh, quilling Ma'am uh, quilling is an art form ma'am uh, there are colored strips of paper which are rolled and pasted and then uh, the glued together and we shape them with our palms and our fingers uh, to create designs uh, it's a 3d art form ma'am for expressing my creativity Okay so you have created any art forms with that Yes ma'am uh, Ma'am um, I have mostly done vegetals ma'am depiction of land forms and fish Uh, animals like fish and horses and zebra mark recently okay so how different is it from the uh, metal art the filigree ma'am uh, first thing i would say is that filigree is done on a metal where mm, in contrast with it's on paper and ma'am uh, filigree takes a lot of time because you need to uh, shape out the form uh, trace it and remove the metal but uh, we can produce a lot of art forms uh, we can create a volume wise we can it is very time intensive ma'am uh, filigree filigree work but quilling is very time uh, efficient and i would say more colorful also quilling is more colorful and i am i would say it is a uh, uh, these are the things i can think of how did you learn this form ma'am uh, i came into contact with it uh, during my graduation days ma'am one of my friends was into quilling i it caught my eye at that moment and i've been doing it since then okay so what uh, you are interested in classic novels yes. what's the basic difference between the classic and non classic novels that you have seen ma'am a uh, classic is a very broad term but uh, to define it uh, i would say classic is something that has very enduring value across timelines uh, it is written in a very distant past uh, so but still it is appreciated by a significant group of people because of the emotions human emotions which everybody can connect with uh, in contrast with uh, literary fiction or scientific uh, fiction i can say uh, it's more historically based uh, rather than contemporary relevant so it gives a window into the past life of people which otherwise we cannot access okay so what's your favorite classic novel then and why did you like it Uh, ma'am my favorite is a tale of two cities by charles dickens ma'am uh, i liked it because of the certain themes that are represented through it the first thing i would say is of uh, this class class conflict because it is set in the background you said tale of two cities right yes sir. 
that is not historical that was contemporary how can you categorize that as a classical novel sir uh, there is an element of history uh, truthness to that uh, it is based in french revolution during the in a french society it compares france and england at that time but sir uh, he places two unique and fictional characters uh, there and so he weaves in his own narratives to send the message sir so it is still a classic because we can we do still connect to it because there are the values of friendship love and uh, these elements of sacrifice uh, and sir uh, there is a strong popularity among it and it is still appreciated sir so Sorry. in the present novels do you feel that all these values are lacking um uh, there are uh, novels that are still written in the latest times which do qualify as classics ma'am uh, i would say this uh, a suitable boy by vikram seth which is an indian novel and the train to pakistan by kushwan singh in india so ma'am uh, they do come up but to categorize them as classics we need to put them to the rest of time okay so you have organized certain events and all can you tell me what are the major challenges in organizing an event and uh, the first thing i would say is finances we need to see to it that the financial resources are coordinated second thing i would say human resources the people which were working for it we need to categorize we need to assign roles based on their strengths and their interests the third thing i would say is that uh, see uh, the people planning uh, because uh, in certain items uh, this tedx event which i had organized it was around 100 people but uh, there is also these college fests which uh, around which involve around uh, 400 to 500 people so we need to provide uh, facilities and amenities like drinking water sanitation and food and see to it that uh, the stampede kind of events do not happen so i would say these are the major challenges ma'am can you name one event which is 100% successful successful ma'am can you can you name an event which is successfully organized with no issues and no challenges at all and you are asking my personal experience your personal experience and that tedx event was well organized ma'am because uh, it it happened uh, uh, along the timelines which we had planned Uh, the people were also uh, intimated about the program and the food and, uh, and other amenities were timely provided and the experience which uh, they had felt and which we had took as a taken as feedback was also positive ma'am so it's that event was well organized you, your target population were basically the school students or the college students right yes ma'am when you enter into the public arena you cannot control the people so in such a scenario how can you make an event successful it could be a mela it could be a some uh, event happening related to temple opening or anything of such sort so how would you actually make it successful and what would be your plans plan a or b or whatever how would you make it successful ma'am uh, i would identify major challenges that would happen for example if you were saying a mela uh, the major challenges i would think would be people management because people do miss out children do get separated from their parents so these centers where in mics are set up for announcements for missing children that would be the first thing i would do second thing i uh, second thing i would do is the establishment of police there uh, for any if any law and order problems come up a uh, police would handle the situation and uh, ma'am i would say sensitization program or leaflet can be given either in uh, electronic format or uh, at the entrance in physical format so that we can sensitize the people for a code of conduct that can be uh, intimated to them in the short time which we have now so you wear as nss coat right yes ma'am i was part so of the nss how will that experience help in your life or in the civil services also ma'am uh, my experience in nss uh, strongly uh, grounded in me the value of social responsibility and to take initiative whenever i see something which i want to change second thing i would say is that uh, it gave me a network of people uh, which i was not who with whom i was not connected before so it provided me an opportunity to socially network now the third thing i would say is that uh, it also created me a sense of eco consciousness which i still continue today uh, by our continuing through an ngo now in administration the, all these elements are very important now. for example uh, during the covid time it was seen that uh, many of the dms had uh, connected to the doctor friends which they had mbbs doctors uh, to give inputs uh, at any around the clock time so social networks do have relevance in administration can you tell me the difference between gender equity and gender equality 
and where are we lacking in our country? Um, uh, equity is a very mechanical format, ma'am, uh, providing equal opportunities. But equi equity goes an extra mile, where we see e people in equal circumstances are treated equally. So it allows us to give uh, positive, uh, positive treatment or uh, positive discrimination, if I can say, to people who are uh, in a way uh, that backwardly placed. So equity is a more forward and positive con concept. Ma it allows uh, positive discrimination, their treatment. In coming to the gender equity element, I would say uh, we are also not equal and equity wise we are even more backward now because uh, the, there is gender pay gap and if we go into uh, labor force participation there is only 37 uh, it's only 37 percentage per woman and uh, only 36 percentage uh, there is 36 percentage gender pay gap and, and we go up the echelons in industry uh, women are come, uh, there is very few participation of women in high decision, high powers and decision making. And politically, if we speak politically, uh, only 14 percentage women uh, we see participation of women in parliament now. So, both politically and economically, and also in the domestic space also, uh, women there is gender equity. There is lot we need to do on gender equity. What is the new public administration? Sir, uh, public administration is a discipline which is. No, I am asking only new. NPA, New Public Administration. Sir? New, New Public Administration. Sir, uh, New Public Administration is a paradigm shift. Uh, it focuses on uh, this part, uh, quality of the service that are provided to the people. It is more public centric, uh, citizen centric. It is more responsive. What is New Public Management? Sir? New Public Management, NPM. Sir, uh, New Public Management is about uh, managing these services uh, with a high degree of uh, professionalism, wherein uh, there are certain standards that are promised to the people and uh, the, uh, the agency that is managing them al always tries to uh, take a feedback cycle so that there is a continuous improvement in the quality of services. Is there any need to make business less unbusiness like in government organizations? You heard the word less unbusiness like. Are you getting what I am saying? Woodrow Wilson, what he said? Sir, you are saying less unbusiness less like. Less unbusiness like. So, active participation of the government in... What is less unbusiness like? Less unbusiness like. What is that? So, being more like business. Is government it necessary thing. to make government organizations less unbusiness like? Sir, I would say yes and no. Uh, we must be wherever the private enterprises are strong enough and they can take uh, upon them to provide the services and market is efficient, there is no need for the state to interact. But there are certain sectors which are strategic, like uh, this railways or nuclear energy or uh, space, wherein it is essential uh, for uh, the presence of the government to ensure that monopolies do not happen. And there is a fair uh, standard of services that are provided to the people. Sir. But in defense and uh, space also, no private participation is already there. No? Sir, uh, it is still at a nascent stage, uh, if you take uh, the case of India. Uh, whether we take uh, this space, uh, there are only it is only now that new uh, private players are coming in. So at a, at a point in time where the if, if like in US we can emulate the model of US like Boeing and uh, these kind of private companies do come up, then it would be a good thing that uh, government can withdraw from the sectors. Recently in budget, one lakh crores about uh, allocated for sunrise domain, uh, sunrise in this thing, um, innovation in sunrise. What is that sunrise domains? Do you know idea? Do you have any idea? Sunrise domains. Sir, uh, I would say sunrise are the elements wherein there is a lot of potential to grow and there's still at a big beginning stage. Sir. So mm -hmm. I would say uh, EVs, electric vehicles and food processing and these elements of uh, photovoltaic uh, cells like peros peroxide cells and battery elements, lithium batteries. These can be the examples of uh, rising sectors, sunrise sectors. Okay. Regarding NGOs in India, any regularization is there? You also worked for NGO, no? Sir. You also worked for one NGO, no? Yes, sir. Okay. Any regularizations are there or not? Sir, uh, there are certain laws that are governing it. Uh, there is registration under the Society Act and also this uh, for FCRA Act for regulating the foreign contributions. Sir. Regarding foreign contribution regulations, NGOs are doing proper 
after receiving the funds from foreign countries, what about their uh, utilization? Any audit is there? Sir, uh, it is seen that many of these NGOs are not uh, maintaining proper records and there are a lot of loopholes happening uh, wherein they are not properly meeting records and audits are not happening as you pointed out. IB has said that uh, many of them are also involving in anti-national activities. So as per the National Volunteer Policy 2007, it would be a good thing if uh, they voluntarily do follow these rules and government also openly enables them sir, to complement the role of the government. Guns. Regarding energy sector, renewable energy, okay, in recent budget they proposed one program, sunroof, na? Yes. Uh, actually, it is viable in the country like India. Sir, uh, presently we have 11 gigawatt uh, capacity of this solar um, electric, uh, solar photo, uh, rooftop solar elements. Sir. So, I would say there is a lot of potential to grow in rooftop solar cell. because uh, I've seen personally in this case in IIT Delhi where majority of the departments were using this solar rooftop elements and we can come up but there are certain challenges uh, majority of them imported from China and there are also these elements of efficiency only 16 to 18 percentage efficiency is seen in them so I believe new materials and a, a mission mode imp implementation of a PLA policy and also this uh, skill development for these uh, these workers who work in this space. I think these can solve those issues. Okay. <coughs> Dheeraj, what are your weaknesses, Dheeraj? Sir, uh, I had noticed that uh, I am one person who puts a lot of, uh, I am a perfectionist, sir. so I put a lot of uh, big targets for me. So in this... Is being perfect a weakness? Sir, I believe we need to have a realistic assessment of what we can do. So, people who do things perfectly has uh, are we are people with weakness? Sir, I said that over. They are over not practical. Sir, overzealousness does have an impact on us. So, you are an overzealous person. It does happen to me that sometimes I put uh, major targets. When, when were you overzealous? Tell me three instances. Sir, uh, during the exams uh, of this preliminary examinations, I had put up a lot of syllabus for me to complete in a single day. So it so happened that I did not complete, uh, I only completed 75% mm, of Other them. than that? Sir, uh, in this NGO programs, uh, I was involved in three plantations. So I had planned for uh, 20, 20 tree plantations in, 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 in my team, but we could only realize of five to six. So I, at the end of the day, I was visually disappointed. And so it means to say that you are a bad manager, you don't anticipate things properly. So how do you expect that you will manage a district? Sir, uh, I would say I learned a lot from my experiences. So, at that point of time, I realized that... So, you uh, want us to put in the seat and experiment with you on the society? Sir, I would say I had a lot of experiences, so I would not put, repeat those mistakes. And I had taken certain learnings that I need to consult. I need to uh, ask them also how much... Uh, Apart from being a perfectionist, do you have any other weaknesses? Sir, uh, I had seen recently that uh, I was not emphasizing much on my health. Uh, uh, so, I was not going for walks, I was not exercising. So, I impose it upon me that I will definitely go for exercising. So how would an unfit in terms of health, how would a person without proper planning would suit an administrative job? Sir, I am working on this specific element. So you are still a work in progress. You are not fit for the job right now, right? Sir, uh, I am working on my health and it is showing benefits. I am more energetic now because I am focusing on my What work. are you doing for your health? Sir, uh, I am actively staying away from uh, fast food and processed foods. I'm taking. Uh, I'm keeping an account of what I'm eating in a week. So, and I'm also regularly going for a walk in the Indra Park. And I'm also regularly playing badminton. So okay, Dheeraj. I want to ask you one question. One of your subjects also happened to be political science. Okay. So, do you think with respect to the recent issue of Maldives, I believe we have overreacted. What is your take on that? Do you agree with me? Sir, uh, the government has taken a back stance and they have only uh, taken a mechanical approach wherein they have called in the ambassador. What is the official stand of India on this issue? Did officially India react? Government did not react sir. In the social media people have shown out. So government has not done anything. So I would have expected uh, people, uh, government taking an active approach, proactive approach and uh, messaging to the... What like, should have the government told? Like what? Proactive approach like what? Be specific. 
sir i would say we should have communicated to the people that uh, it is up to it, it was a specific statement of three three people and that does not represent the uh, values or the opinions of the whole of society because the opposition parties came out criticizing these mps and also the president demanding him to apologize so we should not uh, create a uh, and mountain in a, of a mole so in a, we have had a regular interactions with the maldives governments and they have made so don't you think it's a strategically bad move considering china's presence in the region mm -hmm. india should have been uh, uh, considering that fact isn't it a bad move diplomatically sir uh, i would say we could have taken this element uh, uh, the rise of china is undeniable and we are ready to face china so is it a mistake Sir, I will not call it a mistake. I would say we could have done it a bit more in the idea of uh, because I have the benefit of a hindsight. In that benefit of hindsight, I would say we could have done that. What's the difference between Maoism, Naxalism, and communism? Sir, uh, Maoism is an ideology. It's a left-wing ideology. All are ideologies. Sir, uh, it, it 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 specifically emphasizes on the peasants. in opposition in opposition to uh, this which came first sir which came first uh, Ma uh, maoism uh, it came in a later stage sir after communism because initially communism was uh, so what's the difference between maoism and communism sir communism in its base of specifically emphasis on industrial workers uh, but uh, maoism uh, it, it emerged from in reality the social reality social political reality of china wherein the peasants were identified as the main workers mm -hmm. so this was the major difference. naxalism so naxalism it's an extreme extremist ideology wherein they do not believe in democracy uh, they believe in a revolutionary stance they do accept violence so uh, maoism and uh, communism are not extreme ideologies uh -huh. are they liberal ideologies sir uh, they are still on the paper sir they do they are the state of ideas so russian ussr was a paper government china's uh, government is a paper government sir it is an ideology stance on which governments are formed but taxalism is a specific uh, issue wherein uh, you they take up arms and they create the challenge the government the challenge the state wherein they want to set up an, uh, an alternative what is the objective of taxalism sir uh, they want they they use revolutionary means to set up this people's government sir they call it a people's government but i do not see to be really reflect of the people because it's not a democratic model okay so i feel that somehow we have been very very soft in terms of dealing with aggressive china when they are crossing our borders they are encroaching the lands so we have been very soft ineffective what do you say do you agree with me yes or no and your justification for that sir uh, i would say i would not, I, i see no nothing wrong in india's policy sir because first thing i would like to highlight is china is military and economically stronger than us so if you go for a conflict there will be consequences which would be very bitter for us point number 2 we are taking a diplomatic stance which is good for us because uh, solving it diplomatically would be better and in line with the but you are losing territory you are losing territory so how do you deal with that so you are at the mercy of china sir uh, the lsc has not been uh, demarked properly there is there is lot of disagreement we are working on it and we should work on it we do hope that some in some point in future uh, there is a parity because if we see today the, the gap between india and china is reducing okay okay dheeraj tell me which is your favorite ted talk sir uh, there was one specific ted talk given by this mr amit rudha uh, ips officer regarding the bihar his experiences in bihar the difficulties he had gone through the personal transformation he felt he had if you are given a position to give a ted talk as on today what is the topic on which you would give a ted talk uh, sir uh, i would pick passion and persistence sir. Uh, i believe every person should have the courage to choose what they believe is right rather than what is easy they should be persistent in working out and bringing it to fruition mm -hmm. prime minister uh, i think you have worked with some ngo for the uh, environment consciousness sir yes sir ecosystems Nothing. and all so prime minister uh, government has said that we would bring things to net zero by 2070 so how is the government planning to do that what, what extra should be done from apart apart from whatever is being done till now what new measures are required sir uh, there is a multi pronged strategy uh, we are going for afforestation Uh, secondly we are going for renewable energy to reduce uh, per mitigation 
we are also going for adaptation it has been there since many decades so what will change now drastically so uh, i would say the pace at which we are going for renewable energy has uh, picked up so what strategies newly we are, the industries are adopting to reduce greenhouse gases and all what new strategies sir uh, where is this green credit trading that's there since very long sir i would need a minute to think about it few seconds anything related to dealing with fuels sir uh, we are going for clean coal technologies and we are also going for mixture of uh, this biofuels into mm -hmm. the there is 10% the 10 achieved uh, we were going for 20% of mixture of biofuels with the petroleum fuels okay from one last question from my side do you think this project of bringing cheetahs to india is a mistake sir uh, cheetah introduction program uh, was ambitious Uh, they wanted to provide diversity to the cheetah population. They in your word, in your language, it was over zealous initiative. Sir, so, uh, in a way, uh, there were certain problems in the implementation. Say yes or no. Is it a mistake or not? Sir, I would not call it a mistake, uh, but it was definitely. They were killed. The cheetahs were killed. They would have happily lived in Africa. Why did you bring here? Sir, uh, it is a as an environmental sensitive, conscious person. how do you see that sir uh, it is a hypothetical situation i cannot i cannot say that these cheetahs would not have died had they stayed back in namibia or south africa sir. so uh, i would definitely say it is a good program you are the secretary of ministry of environment and forest prime minister asked you dheeraj do you think i made a mistake of bringing cheetahs to india what would you tell him an honest answer sir there are certain teething issues i would not say it's a mistake because in a long term it is it would balance the ecosystem uh, and sir uh, it would create a proper chain wherein this invasive species would be checked in from coming in because cheetah is a predatory species it would also balance the population of this herds herd and herding grazing elements so it would ultimately stabilize the ecosystem sir so uh, certain steps can be taken to solve the issues the opinions of the uh, experts on namibia and south africa can be considered uh, and this cholera in issue which, which had repeatedly coming up came up wherein infections had uh, happened so this has to be addressed and regular visits and checks in uh, check in has uh, check in have to be done so that uh, any issue can be addressed at a earlier stage yeah. thank you